Hi, I'm Steve Place, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. Now, Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every month we highlight a nonprofit in our city or county doing great, great work. And we're fortunate this month to have with us people from Project Homeless Connect, Peter Connery, and Evan Morrison. So, welcome to you both. Um, Peter, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with this great concept of actually providing services for homeless people? Thanks, Steve. Um, my name is Peter Connery, and I'm Vice President of Applied Survey Research. Mm -hmm. And uh, Applied Survey Research is based in Watsonville, and we're a 30-year-old, 30, 30 or actually 38-year-old uh, company that is focused on uh, social research in a, in a community setting. Starting in 1999, we, we became interested in, uh, as a consequence of our work in community assessment projects in Santa Cruz and Monterey County, we're asked to participate in a homeless census. And that led to um, probably uh, a 20, 20 plus year interest in wow. providing technical assistance mm -hmm. to uh, homeless uh, issues throughout California and the, the US. In 2010, um, one of the challenges we had with the U.S. Census uh, recurring challenge is to get as much participation from the diversity of, of, our, of our population in the community to participate in the, in the census. And some of us uh, got together and thought that we could work with the 2010 Census Committee mm -hmm to uh, launch a Project Homeless Connect, mm -hmm. which would serve dual purposes of providing homeless services um, in a one-day event setting, and then also using that event as an opportunity to register persons experiencing homelessness for the U.S. Census. Oh, okay. so, uh, uh, many, many, many of us know that the U.S. Census is very much male-based, mm -hmm. and if you're houseless, mm -hmm. that that doesn't work very well for you. And we're approaching another census uh, as we speak, so it's interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, we got together and United Way and the U.S. Uh, Census Committee of, in Santa Cruz County uh, gave us some seed money, and we had. Uh, the Santa Cruz Civic as a venue, mm -hmm. and we organized uh, service providers ranging from direct medical service providers of uh, uh, physical checkups, dental, vision, uh, service eligibility, uh, criminal justice, uh, employment programs, housing advisory, all, a whole range of services Roughly 50 service providers yeah, were, were invited to set up booths. Mm -hmm. And the model was uh, part of a national model of Project Homeless Connects where uh, persons uh, in extreme poverty or ex currently experiencing homelessness were invited to come to the event. They would be matched up with a community volunteer who would help shepherd them through the various workstations and service stations within the event. Mm -hmm. And Evan, uh, we've done a couple things together, so welcome. Uh, your primary yeah, work you. is a veterans outreach with the Homeless Services Center. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little about yourself, how you got involved with uh, a veterans outreach, and then a little bit about how you became a steering committee member for our Project Homeless <laughs> Connect. Yeah, well, um, I'm not a veteran myself, but I come from a family of veterans. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really kind of the luck of a draw. I was looking for a new position, yeah. and Homeless Services Center had that position open. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. So I'll, I just you know, threw myself into it. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been doing it now for about a year and a half. Mm. Um, and I'm out in the community in all kinds of different, different contexts yeah. looking for uh, homeless veterans. Mm -hmm. And um, as part of my outreach, I joined the project Project Homeless Connect uh, Committee. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been involved with them for about a year and a half as well. Yeah, terrific. We have a short video that we're going to show, and then we'll talk a little more about uh, the uh, events themselves and uh, uh, what kind of services are provided and the history of it just a little bit. So let's see the video and we'll come back.
And that's some wonderful footage of the uh, the Watsonville event. Uh, I was telling our <coughs> guests that uh, uh, these shores are evergreen, so while they'll be in rotation here for the next month or so prior to the June 19 Santa Cruz Connect event, it'll also be uh, played year-round because there are two events, one in uh, spring normally and then one in uh, Watsonville in November. So that's Watsonville Connect. Wonderful. So, um, Peter, let me tell us a little bit about uh, how long the 10 year anniversary of the Santa Cruz Connect event. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, 2010 was our first mm -hmm. uh, uh, Project Homeless Connect event, and it was in Santa Cruz. And we were able to continue those annually uh, for the next six years as a single event, and then about Three years ago, we started a second event, mm -hmm. which was in Watsonville. And the idea was that there's a, a, there's, a, 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 there's homelessness in Watsonville that was, that was challenging for folks to get to our Santa Cruz event. Right. And we wanted to have something that was more uh, localized to South County needs. So we got together with the community they felt a fall event would be more effective than a spring event mm -hmm. because of local economic issues and November was the, yeah. was the date there. So we've had three Watsonville Connect events and uh, this year in November, as you mentioned, yeah. we're planning our fourth. And it's wonderful. Um, uh, we were talking about uh, last year's event at Santa Cruz Connect was at Portuguese Hall for the first time on Harvey West, and they're hosting again this year. Uh, wonderful host, great people, and uh, hoping, I know the steering committee feels like maybe that will be a permanent home at some point. Uh, and the Watsonville event, of course, has been at the VFW for all the events they've had, and hopefully that will continue to happen. Um, in terms of uh, homeless vets, uh, Evan, do you find uh, a greater number in Watsonville? Do you do much of your work down in South County as well as North County? I haven't found a greater number in Watsonville. In fact, I would say, it's in my experience, it's been a much greater number in the Santa Cruz area. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, um, you know the the thing with like um, the thing with veterans is you know a lot of veterans well like we put out all our materials in English and Spanish mm -hmm. but basically every veteran at least that I've encountered speaks English and they seem to come up to North County to seek out services yeah. now um, do I need to get into South County more I do but I don't know that I'm going to find a heck of a lot of veterans yeah interesting and I wanted to mention uh, that. Uh, phc uh, santacruzorg is the website. Uh, since this is an Evergreen show and since we do have uh, two events every year, you can volunteer not only for the upcoming uh, June 19 event, but also for the Watsonville event if you like. You can donate and you can volunteer year round. So go to the phc santacruzorg uh, website and uh, do what you can to help uh, spend a little time with the folks on uh, June 19 and uh, maybe in November if you're around come down to Watsonville for that event. Uh, Peter, uh, you were mentioning that uh, your ASR uh, is the uh, organization that does the annual homeless census survey for a number of communities and we just recently saw that uh, the increase in homeless uh, numbers in San, San Francisco was 14%. You were saying that that's not necessarily representative, that, that, that some are up and some are down uh, statewide. You think that that reflects more need uh, in terms of uh, homeless people and services and support than in the past? Or are we kind of getting to a point where we are beginning to recognize the need and maybe meet it at least to some extent? Yeah, it, it's... It's difficult to answer that, you know, as a universal statement. Mm -hmm. uh, the the recent data has indicated that the West Coast, in particular, has been uh, really challenged by uh, by homelessness, mm -hmm. and the per, the high percentage of unsheltered persons on the West Coast is very different than other parts of the country. And obviously, th there's uh, much better weather here, but there's also uh, housing affordability issues and wage gap issues that are especially uh, impactful uh, in the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So in other parts of the country, in the Midwest and the East, East Coast, th they're generally having more successful 
uh, more success at ending homelessness mm -hmm. than we're, we're seeing on the West Coast. Yeah. And in particular this yeah. year, uh, in the few counties that are, have officially announced their results, the Bay Area in particular, in many communities in, in uh, Southern California, have seen very large increases. And of course, you just completed in January the, the biannual 2019 Homeless Census Survey for Santa Cruz County, so we're looking forward to seeing uh, what those numbers are like. One thing that strikes me about uh, about doing work uh, as a homeless advocate and being able to work with, with the steering committee and the Project Homeless Connects is that uh, we're able to serve you know several hundred people at each one of these events, so the need is there. And it's wonderful to see the service providers. And tell us a little bit about the wonderful, you know, uh, service providers that come out uh, 40 or 50 at each event, oh, yeah. uh, work all day long uh, without any kind of compensation, just to be able to contribute to the community. Yeah, and as service providers, you know, as Peter said, of all kinds. Mm -hmm. um, and as a service provider, it's really great to be able to do that mm -hmm. because it, you can make sure a particular person's all their needs are met yeah. on a day, as opposed to like when I'm out in the community. And they're like, oh, I need dental. Oh, I need a driver's license. Oh, I need my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's like 10 different directions I'm sending you. Mm -hmm. Whereas at Project Homeless Connect, we can get all that taken care of or at least started while they're there. Yeah. And that's a really great service. Yeah. It, um, it makes it much easier you know, in my job of helping people to get off the street and makes it much easier to actually yeah. do that. And it's a wonderful model because uh, as I said, uh, go to the phc-santacruz.org website and, and volunteer, uh, maybe give you a few bucks, but it's a good opportunity uh, to be a navigator for the people. When the homeless folks come into the uh, Santa Cruz Connect and Watsonville Connect uh, events, they're paired with a navigator who takes them around to various service providers. They'll fill out uh, uh, an entry form that says, you know, what services they would like to see and to visit, to kind of organize it for them. But it's an opportunity to really meet and engage with uh, with a community that's that's not always uh, really recognized as part of the community and doesn't always have a connection with the community that I think the word connect really embodies. Yes, yeah, Steve, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, in addition to the real tangible results of connecting with the service provider network within the community, folks experiencing homelessness also have an ability to educate the community through the volunteer process. And the, the pairing of the volunteer with, the, with their uh, client or the guest who's, who's going through the event and experiencing the different service station is a tremendous bond to see and one of the most rewarding things that we on the committee see every event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't tell you how many stories I've had with a volunteer that has come to me and said, you know, I took John or, you know, Dolores out, uh, mm -hmm. took them around, and it turns out that we grew up in the same town and had the same, life, many of the same life experiences, yeah. were in Vietnam together or went to the same college or were mm -hmm. separated by two or three degrees and they could see where some unfortunate turns in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the, the guest's life uh, you know, sent them down an unfortunate path in that it humanized that experience yeah. in, uh, in a way that you know, nothing we can read in the papers or we can experience in our day-to-day in, in -day lives. And Evan, you were saying that um, uh, a couple of the uh, service providers that are yet to be signed up for veteran services. Yeah, yeah, and there will be, there's a whole section for veteran services at Project Homeless Connect. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but there will be at least two, if not three or four different what service providers yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are, for homeless veterans in general, there are more services, yeah. and uh, we work hard to get our vets, you know, into stable housing. Yeah. And I do think that, uh, in, in my experience, the, the homeless veterans in Santa Cruz is sometimes are kind of an unrecognized demographic. That you see the homeless folks, so well, they have a service from a services center, or they visit us uh, the, at the Santa Cruz Connect or Watsonville Connect. But homeless vets uh, are really unique you know, set of, of, of individuals in our, uh, in our community, and they really uh, are in need of as many resources and as much support as any other person who's suffering from un being unsheltered. Yeah, 
Totally. Um, and yeah, there are specialized services for veterans, mm -hmm. and veterans face certain challenges that other people don't face. Mm -hmm. I would uh, hazard a guess that the best, the most concrete example is just discharging from the military mm -hmm. to civilian life. Mm -hmm. In the military, you're kind of surrounded by services. Mm -hmm. Like not only do you have your squad, but you have like all these people who are providing different services to you. Um, then you come into civilian life, and most, if not all, of those services kind of back away. Mm -hmm. And um, so managing that transition can be a challenge for veterans, and sometimes that leads to their homelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, uh, again, uh, drawing from your experiences uh, working uh, as a primary agency that conducts a census and survey, uh, uh, what are you seeing in terms of the, the character of the homeless community changing over time? Well, uh, I'd say a few things uh, that we've noticed in the last few years. There's, uh, there's a growing youth population. I think we saw in, um, in 2017 that roughly 38% of the currently homeless population in 2017 was under 25 My years goodness. of age. That's the 18 to 24 kind of demographic, the eight, yeah? Well, 18 to 24 and younger. That includes, oh, really? you know, children, children, <coughs> some mm -hmm. in families as well. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of youth that are having trouble launching, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, getting off the ground and, uh, you know, getting employment and housing and overcoming some of those startup challenges. Mm -hmm. That's something we've certainly noticed. The thing that I, uh, that I continue to see throughout the years is that there's continuing medical, mental health, and behavioral health issues mm -hmm. in, the, in the community right. that are uh, unfilled. Yeah. And you know, despite uh, accomplishments like um, you know, Obamacare and, mm -hmm. and a lot of veteran resources that are available now that weren't there is a real shortage of uh, service providers for uh, for health issues and wellness mm -hmm. issues, yeah. and there's a real misunderstanding of how long it takes to overcome some of those challenges. Absolutely. And we just showed uh, while you were talking, Peter, some of the pictures from Watsonville Connect, just to give people uh, kind of the flavor of what these events are like, and they're really wonderful events. Again phc-santacruz.org if people want to donate or volunteer. Volunteers are always needed, but come and engage with the community and, and have an opportunity really to see for yourself uh, the kinds of services that are being offered to uh, people who are unsheltered and who really are an underserved uh, segment of our population. One of the things that I was uh, most uh, uh, intrigued by was that uh, the DMV when they started to come in and that was the one of the most popular of all the services because it's very difficult for almost people to get to the DMV to have the patience as anybody would have you know to wade through of being able to get a picture ID which is sometimes the gateway to getting back into benefits and housing and employment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a that's a big event, and I think what you've seen from the video mm -hmm. is what a good vibe yeah. there is in the event, right. and how many happy faces and mm -hmm. smiles, yeah. and in all of the ten years that we've done events in North County and in South County, we've never had any issues or negativity at mm -hmm. the events, and it's quite a contrast to you know some of the things that were portrayed during the the Camp Ross yeah. encampment where it was in the media many times it was portrayed as a as a denizen of you know crazy activity and yeah. negativity yeah. and it, the Project Homeless Connects are a complete counterpoint to that whereas you're in an environment where there's sharing giving and compassion and services everyone acted you know in a in a real yeah. fine community spirit all looking yeah. forward to you know getting a leg up and a leg out of homelessness yeah. and I will say as a personal observation that uh, having worked with the uh, Project Homeless Connects during committee myself for the last several years it's a wonderful group you know it's a very joyful you know a very engaged group uh, Michelle Whiting and uh, Laura Connery and Jenna Gallant really should be mentioned as we do this kind of show for all the terrific work Nathan Jones people do terrific terrific work but it's a wonderful group of people to work with and that really just kind of builds from that 
camaraderie that all those folks have out into the event, and that's the atmosphere you get. You know, and it's and it's wonderful as somebody who does, I say, myself work with homeless folks on the street, an opportunity to have them welcomed into a space and say, we want to have you here. We you know we want to get to know you. We want to try to provide from uh, some services if you that's what you want to get, but we want you to feel welcome here. You know, and this is this is your event. This is your home for the day. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm glad you you feel that way, and that's certainly yeah. what we're trying to work on in the committee. And yeah. uh, you know, the the haircuts. Yeah. It seems kind of silly, but the self esteem mm -hmm. that uh, you know folks get from getting their do tightened up a little bit <laughs> and in the haircutting session, yeah. and then yeah. you know just the mechanics of a free meal mm -hmm. and the and the giveaway counters where there's things that range from, you know, food to clothing to, uh, you know, books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there was a big pile of candy on one of those shots there. <laughs> those are all things that bring a smile to the, yeah. to the, the, the guests that come to the event. Yeah. And, and we're delighted to be able to do it. And I think it's wonderful as well. I uh, get some contributions from Second Harvest Food Bank and, and, and a number of places uh, that have some of the essentials of life, the toothbrushes or shampoo or things like that, something to take away with you. But, uh, but I think it's the most important thing they take away is a sense of belonging in the community. You feel that way? Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's something that uh, we could even work harder to provide yeah. on a yeah. regular basis. Yeah. Uh, making sure people feel like they belong in the community, mm -hmm. I think, would go a long way ways to helping people get um, off the street and into stable housing. Yeah. And I do think that's often the case is not only are homeless people uh, voiceless, but they, they, they seem to be stateless in, in, within our communities, and they shouldn't be. These are our friends and neighbors. You know, it's the old thing about, you know, we're all one paycheck away from being homeless or one uh, family emergency away from being homeless. And that, and that is so true uh, if you consider that uh, to be the, the state of things. And it behooves everybody to kind of, you know, engage and build community through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, one of the things that we have found in our survey efforts in Santa Cruz is that 68% mm -hmm. of, the, of the population we survey that are experiencing homelessness in Santa Cruz in 2017 had stable housing in Santa Cruz before uh, they, be, they had their, their episode of homelessness. Yeah. And that's a similar percentage, if not higher, in other surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. Yet, if I talk to leadership in most communities, everyone thinks that their homeless population are being imported from some other community, that they're not local. Mm -hmm. So uh, the data that we, we do, we generate in those other communities shows that, you know, that's just not true. Yeah. Unfortunately, the terms homeless and transient are, are somehow linked in the minds of, of many community members, and that's simply not the case, statistically speaking. And yet, it's kind of one of those myth-busting things. You say, well, these are our friends and neighbors. And they were Santa Cruz residents before they began homeless. So, well, that can't be the case, or let me see those statistics, or that can't be right. But that's been consistently the 68 to 72 or so percentage over the last couple of homeless census surveys that that is the number of people who are Santa Cruz residents and they just happen to be unsheltered. Well, that, you mentioned uh, on the committee that we have a lot of folks from the faith community. Yes, indeed. So Santa Cruz Bible and um, and uh, the Church of Latter Day Saints. Yes. Uh, and you know the all the many of the large churches in in the community and. One of the, the, the things that comes out of those discussions is it doesn't matter whether you're local or not. Yes. We need to show basic, you know, human compassion. Right. And yeah. that's their motivation. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, myself, I'm a, I'm a family man. And, you know, there's a family code that you, you look after, you know, the, the kids that, you know, come into your house. And yeah. because your kids will be in somebody else's house and, you know, you're going to, they're going to take, they're going to take the generosity of that other other mm -hmm. family, other community, and 
that's kind of what we we hope to do here in Santa Cruz. Well, it's one, it, yeah, it's, and and it's wonderful you say that because uh, we want to make this a generational thing. And uh, in our steering committee meetings, your daughter Laura, who has taken a very strong role in really guiding that committee, uh, you've been the chairman for some period of time. But as that torch passes, you know, as people become invested in this particular work, it's nice to see that there are the people who are willing to say, "Hey, I want to be a part of that too." I wanted to make Make sure that we mention again June 19 is the event at Portuguese Hall Santa Cruz Connect and then of course there'll be the uh, the fall event in uh, November in Watsonville but phc-santacruz.org uh, go on the website uh, uh, volunteer for the upcoming event or any of the events that uh, that are coming up uh, throughout the year and uh, maybe a couple extra bucks we always use that we've got about a minute left it's been wonderful having both of you here uh, always enjoy talking to you and very much enjoy working with you uh, to put uh, these events together uh, anything uh, on the horizon for uh, uh, you Peter in terms of uh, your work with the homeless well we're uh, we're in the report production uh, phase of our uh, our homeless assessments mm -hmm. throughout uh, California, and uh, and we also work up in Seattle. So, mm -hmm. our summer is kind of booked with that yeah. dissemination and report production. Well, thank you for that work. It is extremely valuable and very much respected in the community. The work that you do in uh, the census, uh, homeless census survey, and Evan, thank you for your work. Uh, Absolutely terrific with the veterans. Uh, we honor our vets here in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, and it's nice to have somebody like yourself uh, who is honoring them with your work. So. Thanks for that, and for being a member of the Santa Cruz uh, Connect Steering Committee. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in again for this uh, month's uh, Nonprofit Spotlight. We'll be back again next month uh, with another group uh, doing wonderful work in the city and the county of Santa Cruz. So uh, do tune in for that. And again, one last time, phc-santacruz.org. Volunteer, a couple of bucks. Help out these great people do this great, great work. I've been Steve Plach, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. yeah.